It's late at night. The gang completed its task and left. The children sailed to their dream world long ago. I approached Tsubaki with a question as she did the laundry. Do you want to stay at my place tomorrow? There are some things about my job that I have to talk to you about. Putting my chin on the back of my hands, I made a pondering pose. I have some very important things to tell you. So? It's just, I know you're very worried about your family. I want to talk properly, alone. I stared at her without blinking. Tsubaki laughed, embarrassed. Of course. I knew she'd obey me. Hey, what exactly do you like about me? You know, that statement worries me. Oh man, are you serious? We fooled around for a while. I put a lot of effort into putting Tsubaki's heart to me step by step. There is nothing to worry about. A while back, this girl threw away her family to be with me. She should respond to my expectations. Alright, I'm ready to hit the sack. Her alert movements were like those of a doting wife. I felt at ease just looking at her. Want to sleep together? Her face turned red in an instant. As she said it, she leaned her head against my chest. What is? Yeah, I hope we can be together forever. No matter what happens, you say? Even if she learns what I'm really like? With a thin smile, I stroked Tsubaki's hair. The scent of shampoo tickled my nose. Our lips met. I kissed her gently, gently, trying my hardest to hide the lie. Tsubaki. There is no question about it. I've fallen for her. It might be a little warped, but that warping is likely due to the fact that we grew up in different environments. I'll press her for an answer tomorrow. The temperature was still incredibly cold. The freezing wind was enough to make anyone shiver. Tsubaki and I agreed to meet outside the gate after school. <sighs> Eiji flew pa past us in a bad mood, appearing and disappearing as quick as the wind. I bet he doesn't find himself that inter interesting. You need to hit the kindergarten first, right? We picked up Hiroaki and headed for her place, but... Tsubaki must suspect the man to be a child abductor. She is clearly feeling uneasy. Hiroaki pointed at me, then tried to illustrate how big he was by stretching his hands. Tsubaki forced a smile and nodded. When Hiroaki left, Tsubaki worriedly asked me. This must be another attempt to harass your family. Stalking family members is a common trick amongst those shady underworld types. Tsubaki is obviously a little stressed over this. Calm down, I don't think things have gotten to the point where they'd abduct him. 
Tsubaki bit her tightened lips as she watched Hiroaki waddle into the house. Alright, let's go to my place. <sighs> she let loose a colorless response. What, you don't want to? I know how you must feel right now. I gently put my head on Spucky's shoulder. I want to tell you something, but given the sh this situation, maybe I should wait for another time. I'm sorry, why don't we talk tomorrow? I ran my fingers through her hair and turned around to leave. Ma Tsubaki grabbed my sleeve. No, it's fine. Family comes first. So are you coming or not? Are you sure? I ask skeptically. Like I said, it can wait for tomorrow. Don't force yourself. Alright. I grabbed Tsubaki's hand and smiled. Despite the frigid winter wind, Tsubaki's hand filled me with warmth. It's so cold. Let's hurry inside. My raw senses began to relax as I crossed the threshold of my warm apartment. Let me take your jacket first. Would you like some coffee? Arigato. I stood in the kitchen boiling some water. A pot of fresh coffee quickly finished brewing. Tsubaki looked at me as she sipped her coffee gently. Have you been writing in your diary recently? Did the incident yesterday make the cut? She laughed to herself and the mood darkened. I guess you write the whole truth down in your diary whether you want to or not. A lying diary. I chuckled as I brought the mug to my mouth. But hypothetically, what of the very experience you believed in were the lie? What would you do? Facing a question with obviously deeper significance than our previous banter, Tsubaki didn't know how to answer, thus she remained silent. In other words, if I had been lying to you, what would you do? Her expression was oblivious, like that of a child who thinks she's on the receiving end of a joke. Nah, but don't you remember? I hid something from you, did I not? Eh? I only just recently taught you why I skipped classes so often, right? Even you? It seems my tone has finally made her a bit nervous. Her bright smile is all but gone now. I slowly nodded my head. It looks like she is ready for what I have to say. The truth is, Tsubaki, I need your help with a certain matter. I sighed and chuckled in self-ridicule. It's related to my job. We've run into a roadblock that we are struggling to overcome. If this continues, we could go bankrupt. Tsubaki's expression changed immediately. This assignment is part of a contract with a very large corporation in the city. If I fail to deliver, the company will be in dire straits indeed. So yes, if worse comes to worse, my father and everyone in the company will be homeless. I continued while analyzing Tsubaki's body language. We are getting down to the wire, what with the deadline so close. To be honest, we are in deep trouble. So, I sufficiently worried her as she blurted that out in one breath. What's the job? I paused for a second before continuing. It's related to the development of the Eastern District. Tsubaki looked puzzled. She obviously hasn't figured out the meaning behind those words. I 
I shook my head. My job is to consolidate the land in the area. The farmland there is later to become a recreational district, complete with resorts and other entertainment infrastructure. So in other words, we need to purchase all the real estate there. Do you still not understand? Even now, Tsubaki doesn't betray my expectations. Her bewildered expression doesn't even bear a hint of distrust toward me. Do you really mean that? She nodded, her lips pursed tightly together. In that case, there is something you could do to help me. I kept observing her. I watched on as those trusting eyes rapidly became hollow. Will you move out of that house? Time must have frozen. She stared at me blankly. Soon, well, uh, um, she kept stuttering, unable to put together a coherent phrase. Force you? Indeed, that's what I'm saying. And you know, this didn't start today or yesterday. In truth, you've been my target since before the kidnapping occurred. My mind is entirely numb right now. Only the most spectacular of stupors would allow my heart to suppress my love for Tsubaki and the sadistic delight I get from bullying, uh, bullying, uh, bullying the weak. Yesterday, I commanded someone to harass your family through disturbing phone calls. I also called up a local biker gang and sent intimidating men to your doorstep. Correct. As long as you refuse to leave that house, the harassment will continue. I assure you, this is the truth. If you insist you don't believe me, then I'll arrange for another phone call right this moment. I feel un unusually calm for having just betrayed a young girl's trust. Tsubaki once said that my voice changes at times. I suddenly realized that this is one such moment. It's not like I enjoy coercing people, you know. It hurts to be so cruel. And I really do love you. And your family too, they call my heart so much. Your home cooked meals are delicious and the evening conversation is so relaxing. In all my years I never realized that sleeping on the floor could be such a positive experience. Taking a bath with Hiroaki has become an everyday occurrence. Tsubaki, her eyes filled with tears, would be crushed by my merciless reply. Money, Tsubaki. Money can give you... Me, even your family, more happiness than we could ever need. No, Tsubaki, it's me who doesn't understand you. Why won't you move out? I look down at Tsubaki. You a lot are causing headaches for a whole lot of people. I pointed my finger at her. In any case, it was your uncle who lent your father that money. That's 50 million yen down the drain, although I can't say for certain what kind of situation your uncle's in. That's no negligible sum, even to those of us who live quite comfortably. He may have had to go through a lot in order to manage that. If only you would submit to the developer's requests and sell the land, not only could you repay that debt, but you'd even have extra to spare. No matter how precious that house is or how beautiful your memories with it are, shouldn't you put the greater priority on paying off your debt? Of course, the uncle who loaned them the money obviously knew their situation when he made the decision. And for Tsubaki's dad, who owns a farm, moving also means losing his business. In other words, the reason why the landlord gave them the money in the first place is so that Tsubaki's family could stay on this land. Selling off that land would defeat the purpose. Obviously, this relative does not want to see the Miwa family move. However, I mustn't allow this realization to reach Tsubaki. Don't you find it odd? All the families around you have already moved away. You are the only ones left. Everyone else found money to be more important than their homes. So why is your family so adamant about staying? If only you were willing to move, they'd be able to build hotels there. Plenty of people would pay to stay at these hotels. Everyone profits, and profit creates more happy families like yours. After sighing deeply, I spoke again in a deep, sad voice. 
You have a wholesome family. You've never done anything wrong in your entire life. To be honest, I feel horrible for causing you so much suffering at my guilt triples as your boyfriend. But even so, I beg you, moving out is the best option for everyone. My voice was warm and sweet, but I kept my head extremely calm. Tsubaki looked at me, then smiled listlessly. As if she forgot what she had planned to say, Tsubaki took a deep breath. I was fully prepared for such admonition from Tsubaki. Because this is a necessary evil. I can't go into too much detail, but a lot of incidents in the past would have been settled a lot more smoothly if the Yakuza had been involved. Yet, since the parties involved refused to resort to such methods, tragedies have occasionally occurred. Tenants have killed their landlords, families have been turned out on the street. In general, people have gone through pain which they shouldn't have had to endure. Yakuza involvement in land disputes is hardly out of the ordinary. Gambling and prostitution rings see similar scenarios. When you need something done but the laws and morals of society limit your actions, it's natural to seek out someone who can settle the situation smoothly. It's just unfortunate that this particular job just so happened to fall upon my shoulders. Tsubaki frowned. To say such things at this point. I've already lived alongside your family for a while now. I know that the entire family revolves around you. If you sincerely ask him, your father won't resist for long. This I can guarantee. Are you saying you feel like you're betraying your family? Tsubaki gave the biggest nod yet. It's time to make my closing arguments. But didn't you tell me that you'd do anything I asked? Didn't you say you want to help me? I'll say this as many times as need be. I love you, even when you are obstinate like this. Sure, it gets annoying sometimes, but in the end, it just makes me more and more interested in you. Heck, it's probably how I came to love you. So I'll ask you once again, Tsubaki. I smiled broadly the last time I asked her this, but my expression this time was most certainly quite different. Here's a tried question for you. Tsubaki seemed to know what I was about to say. What's more important, me or your family? Neither of us knew when the snow began to fall outside, dancing slowly through the glow of my apartment's blindingly bright lights. Tsubaki did not speak. She kept her head down. Tears flooded her eyes. Say, Tsubaki. She finally raised her head upon hearing my voice. Am I a strange person? <laughs> I imagine I am. I couldn't blame anyone for despising me. Yet, there's still one more thing I don't understand. A soft, wispy response tickled from her lips. If you don't have money, then you can't do anything no matter how people treat you. Tsubaki lightly shook her head. Courts, hospitals, schools, funerals, weddings, children, all these require money. The way I see it, people are helpless without money. Yet when I say this, I'm always told that my beliefs are wrong, inhuman even. People tell me that money isn't everything, that this way of thinking is simply the arrogance of the rich. What do you think? There was a moment of silence. <clears throat> Tsubaki's eyes opened wide in shock before Saya finally released her stilled tongue. I don't know. 
そういうふうに考えるんでしょ私が思うのはね京介くん A faint smile and a pair of sad eyes faced me once more. すごくもったいないなって。A shame? 京介くんみたいな人がね、どうしてもっと人助けしないんだろうって。Are you telling me to donate to charity? I'll be frank, I don't have any money to spare. どうして I'll go ahead and use this opportunity to tell you this. I have a debt of my own. This debt is what ties me to my foster father's work in the underworld. My real father left me with an insurmountable debt. If he couldn't pay it back, isn't it natural that I should do so? When she heard this, Baki nodded sadly. そういう事情もあったんだねだから保育園の帰りひろあきの後をつけ回したりできるんだね親のやったことは子供が補って当然と思ってるんでしょ Am I wrong? わからないな私にはただ京介くんがそういう人なんだっていうことが分かってきた After spotting such useless nonsense, Tsubaki slowly let her eyes settle on her feet. I don't understand what's happening. Tsubaki's eyes, her expression, her gaze, they bore no hint of hatred or disgust, nor even pity. Again, I no longer fear anything. That's enough. I mustered words as cold as the bitter winter wind. Will you do as I say? You said you'd help me. Now you can do just that. <laughs> Please, Tsubaki. Tsubaki looked out my massive windows. The snow continued to fall and Tsubaki continued to stare aimlessly at it. Kyosuke-kun, when did you live with your What? Why ask this now? I want to know. Who knows? I was probably around ten. Was it Perhaps. Was your father okay? You know full well that she isn't. That's none of your business. Little by little, like the snow falling outside, the nonsensical Q&A slowly came to a halt. I learned the importance of money. No. At that moment, as if to break the heavy atmosphere in the room, my cell phone rang. Without tearing my gaze from Tsubaki, I put the phone to my ear. Hello? Ah, what can I do for you, Miki-chan? <laughs> Tsubaki looked, taken aback at the sudden bright voice I used. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In that case, be sure to keep an eye on him. I'll contact his father very soon. Ah, yeah, yeah, obviously. That could be my drum card, you know. Understand. I'll pay well for it. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Our conversation ended and I put the cell phone back into my pocket. Tsubaki seemed to be waiting for the right time. Tomorrow? Although I feel it be best to get a response now, I could not bring myself to refuse her request. I understand. Tomorrow night then, I'll bring some people over and your dad can sign the contract then and there. I maintained my heavy-handed approach. Tsubaki simply nodded meekly. In the worst case scenario, I'll break up with you. <laughs> Tsubaki could not hide her disappointment. So, she grabbed her coat from the rack and hurried out the door. 
Only I remained, both hands covering my head, sitting silently on the sofa. Everything is out in the open now. My body felt tired from my wasted efforts. I have a debt of my own. I need this money. I can no longer turn back now. Yeah, it's me. I returned the call after she left. Sorry to bother you time after time, but there's something I need to know. As for our worst case scenario, that deputy commissioner's son, right, he might be useful in the negotiations. Don't be an idiot. Of course I'm prepared to die. Say what? Hmm? I seem different? Does it really matter? You just don't see me when I'm like this, is all? It'll all be over tomorrow, for better or worse. I should go to bed now. I gripped the phone tightly and reaffirmed my stance to the person on the line. As long as it's for the sake of money, there's no information I won't hesitate to dig up, and the ends always justify the means, no matter how dirty they may be. I'll leave this to you, Miki. Miki Moto. Hearing someone use his full name, I typically lighthearted liaison used a thick, deep voice to respond in a serious manner. Of course, I'll take care of it. To ensure adequate preparation, I gave detailed instructions to Mikimoto. Winter nights are long, their darkness is deep, and they quickly seep into an unsteady heart. Who is this Mikimoto person? Maybe we'll find out next time on G Senjo no Mao. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.